what's going on? Today I'm working on the TJ. I got the head mocked up right now. Uh, it's just kind of sitting on the block. Um, so that's one of the things we're gonna do today is assemble the long block. Uh, throw the oil pan on and pretty much get everything minus the accessories buttoned up. Uh, a couple little things I gotta do. Originally I was gonna run the oil right out of the side of the pump. So on a stock 2J oil pump, this port right here is actually blocked off. And the oil uh, is routed through the back and comes out right here. Uh, actually, where's that port? Yeah, right here. So originally I was gonna run a fitting through the side of the block uh, with one line, which would be the return and then have a fitting right here, which would go out to the filter and the cooler. But since I'm running AC and all the accessories, I'm not gonna be able to do that. It's gonna be right in the way. So one of the things I'm gonna have to do right off, take that plug out, route it out the side, or I mean, plug the side and route it through the factory location so I can use the block adapter uh, that I had in the past, just the Canton block adapter block adapter pretty basic so that's what we're gonna be doing and I'll get to it this is the plug I was talking about so I'll go ahead and take that out hopefully A typical half inch NPT plug. So I'll go ahead and throw the plug in the other side. Next is the oil pan. Oil pan. Oil pump. Well, that doesn't fit. So I never had this water pump split apart, actually from the housing, thermostat housing to the front of the water pump. That's old gasket maker there. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it sealed up and just put the O-ring on this part where it actually makes the block. Same thing with the water outlet, or uh, did the heater core. I'm gonna leave that all hooked up. Don't need to reseal it or nothing because it didn't leak. Another thing I did also, um, I don't know what port this is for on the Mark IV Supra, but I don't use it on the third gen. So I went ahead and plugged that and welded it. So we don't need that anymore. I disassembled this thing like a year and a half, two years ago. So everything's just from memory. The bolts fit, that's where they're going. May not be their ideal spot, but whatever. Gonna make it work. So 
we grab the front main. Uh, before you put them in, on the oil pump itself, you can see right down in there, there's a little relief that is a return oil. Um, and if you push the main seal too far down into that hole and block it with the backside here, there's no way for the oil to get back into the oil pan and it'll actually have a lot higher chance to blow out your front main seal. So just keep an eye on that when you're putting the front main on the 2J. I don't have a big enough socket to get in there. So what I'm gonna do is take a 3 8 extension. This will kind of stay in there a little bit. A 3 8 extension. And whoo. Kind of tap it around. All right, just need to do a little bit at a time. Timing gear goes on next. You wanna make sure that slides real easily. If it doesn't, you have a lot of burrs on the snout of the crank, or you have a bent crank, then you wanna go get that checked out. But just a little bit of grease on the main pulley before you put it on. So it gives it a little lubrication. You don't want this thing seizing onto the front of your crank. And this is just red and tacky. Uh, I believe it's Mobile One. No, it's Lucas. So red and tacky. I use this on everything. Great stuff. This is definitely one piece to upgrade if you're trying to push a lot of power through your 2J. Uh, I believe these work with a 1J also, but this is a billet aluminum timing tensioner from Real Street. They work with the stock um, bearings or the pulleys and they're bushed. So they should last a long time and be super strong. They're only $250. So if you're looking to put a lot of power through your engine, definitely look into real street timing tensioner. One little trick I learned is to just put one bolt in your flywheel or where your flywheel would be and basically just tension up against itself. So the factory torque is 239 foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that high. So I'm gonna max this one out at 150 and then go a little bit from there. And hopefully it's enough. The reason I put the main pulley on first is because I wanna be able to tape the lower timing cover off uh, with the timing belt and the main pulley on. So what I'm going to do is cut this thing right here, right in half. Um, probably, probably from here to here. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and cut that and see how it fits. So the reason I did it this way is because the top, well, what's now the top, it has three bolt holes and this has two on the bottom now. I didn't want to cut it this way just because then I would only have one boat holding the bottom piece on which is probably not a huge deal but I wanted a little more support there so let's go ahead and throw that on so a quick rundown on the head um, before I throw it on uh, I actually had a buddy email Jay at Real Street and for our power goals uh, the stock exhaust valves or uh, intake valves should be plenty fine and then I went with the manly um, exhaust valves so those are all brand new it's got the super tech dual valve springs with titanium retainers and Titan Motorsports which are made by Kelford uh, 280 duration 11.4 millimeter lift so these are a really high lift cam I actually ended up having to grind where the buckets are I don't know if you can see that there's a little notch in the, the little bucket there. Uh, I had to grind that out because the lobe itself was hitting the casting of the head. Um, 
So I took a good chunk of material out there, but these should make plenty of power and have a really aggressive low fit idle. gonna end the video right there. Uh, I forgot that I actually have to weld in the cam sensor. So this is a NA head and on the twin turbos they have a cam sensor that sits right here. Um, on the NA head they actually have a distributor so I went ahead and added that. I got the twin turbo, twin turbo oil pump which has the crank sensor uh, provision there. So this essentially will be a GTE setup minus the oil squirters and um, this channel right here for oil which feeds the turbo on the, the turbo block. Um, but I didn't drill that on the non-turbo block so I'll get my oil elsewhere. So this is all I'm going to get today and hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you.